Hello and welcome to the Hooniverse and to the story of the deadliest Daleks imaginable. Now before I jump into this Dalek Empire's origins and their battles with multiple doctors and demons from the dark times, I want to share a key detail that proves just how important these Daleks are. Now if you know Doctor Who, then you've heard of the last great Time War. It was a bitter conflict between the Daleks and the Doctor's people, the Time Lords, with all of creation at stake. It turned every force involved into monsters and destroyed the lives of countless innocents. Even the Doctor found himself at the heart of many battles, questioning his morals and his right to end the war by destroying both sides. It was a war that defined the Doctor for regenerations to come, and shook the universe to its core, and it all started with the Time Lords meddling in the Daleks' history, with the best example taking place on Skaro, at their very genesis, with the fourth Doctor tasked by the Gallifreyans to intervene. These acts wouldn't go unnoticed by a member of the Time Squad, as this ancient Dalek had been watching, thinking, strategizing, and had noticed the changes to time. Some say it's been there in the background, wearing its battered casing through many of the Daleks' conquests and battles with the Doctor, and it had even grown wise to question how time could be used as a weapon. How could the Time Lords get away with such attacks against the Dalek Empire, to change the history of the ultimate creations? This was the Dalek Prime strategist, who wouldn't stand for it, and its sly whispers and malice manipulations, but persuade the Dalek Emperor to wage war against the Time Lords for the control of time itself. The Dalek Emperor would think it started the war, a war that would lead to its claims to be the god of all Daleks, but instead it was all down to this devious Dalek in a battered casing. So, this is the story of the Dalek Empire that started the Time War. The Dalek squad that tried to beat the darkest creatures in creation and faced the Time Lord victorious. This is the history of the Dalek Time Squad. Reeling from the fallout of the Dalek Civil War between the Imperial and the Renegade factions, Davros, creator of the Daleks, had fled and the Daleks were left without a leader. So, one member of the Supreme Council exterminated all other members and appointed itself the new Dalek Emperor and swore to unite the Dalek race with a traditional approach. He created the Restoration Empire. The Emperor Dalek sought a battle armour from the old times, when Daleks won every battle, and having augmented his brain capacity, gave himself a gold casing that called back to the earlier ages of Skaro's glory. This was at a point in time when Skaro, the homeworld of the Daleks, was destroyed, so the Emperor simply rebuilt it, without fouls as a distraction, the Daleks could advance and develop at an exponential rate. Every Dalek was to have the same goal of universal domination, and to make this a reality, the Emperor gave each Dalek a rank to denote their functionality. There are the Dalek Executioners, created from the special weapons Daleks. These creatures are so full of hate it might as well bubble out of their casing. They are programmed with not only an aim, but a thirst for killing despite all logic. They are vicious with armour twice as thick as a regular Dalek, enhanced vision with targeting, and weapons that make any Skaroling jealous. Then there's the Dalek scientists, extremely intelligent, and always thinking of new ways to augment Dalek DNA to make the ultimate being. And when the Emperor is not leading the charge, the Dalek Time Commander is in charge, sitting at the bridge of a Dalek ship, it is fiercely loyal, perhaps to a point of delusion. The Daleks always need foot soldiers, and the new breed of Dalek drone was as evil as ever. The Emperor approached his position as leader of all, laying out simple policies. Firstly, the rebuild of a stable Dalek civilization. Secondly, the expansion of the Dalek Empire, conquering the weak and exterminating anyone who dared to oppose them. And third, and finally, the Emperor would lead the Daleks into a war with the Time Lords and wipe them out from history forever. It was this final idea that was influenced when the Emperor found a Dalek that had survived for an incredibly long time, and labelled him the Dalek Prime Strategist, or simply Dalek Strategist. Since the Emperor rarely thought of his own schemes, the Strategist would provide him counsel. The battered appearance of the Strategist made other Daleks bitter, due to its naturally close relationship with the Emperor. However, it was evident to the Emperor that the survival of the Dalek race was due to the Dalek Strategist's ability to forecast events, and without it, they would be left screaming in the dark. Now with hierarchy out of the way, this new empire was a force to be reckoned with, but neither the emperor nor the strategist foresaw what the scientists had discovered. Some event that had been changed in the past had created ripples throughout the universe, and was threatening the Restoration Empire. 
This discovery was backed up when the Emperor received a message from an ancient Dalek drone, and he realised the unit was a survivor of a time squad that had yet to be sent back in time. From the message, the Emperor concluded the history was under attack, which the Dalek Empire was vulnerable to and that the Doctor was involved. Wanting immediate answers, the Emperor had ordered the invasion of a huge database known as the Archive of Islos, which itself led to the Arcavians of Islos unleashing a deadly entity from another dimension, the Slave of the Hond. The Daleks retreated from Islos and returned to Skaro, pursued by the entity. It attacked Skaro and the Daleks' firepower proved ineffective, forcing the Emperor to order an evacuation. The strategists advised that the evacuation was failing and they should abandon the planet, and the realisation that Skaro had been lost caused the Emperor to fall silent, forcing the strategist to coordinate the retreat. After the strategist suggested reinforcements, the strategist was then sent to awaken a dormant army of 1,100 Daleks, but the entity compromised the army and took it over. As the executioner led Dalek forces against this army, the strategist advised the Emperor to withdraw again, as they could not sustain further losses and defended its failure. Fortunately, the crafty strategist had a plan to lure the entity to the planet the Mechanoids, ravaging their world, stealing their technology, and leaving the Queen of the Mechanoids believing only the Emperor and the strategist to be left with the Dalek Empire. She declared war on the Daleks. This was exactly what the strategist wanted, as when the Mechanoids arrived on Skaro, the Emperor revealed a large army of Dalek drones who were safe and hidden in ancient bunkers, or survived the evacuation. The battle was long and the strategist tricked the mechanoids, further using their beam projector to send the mechanoids through a portal with the entity back to its own dimension. The Dalek Empire lived to fight another day, but the queen of the mechanoids, with her last words, taunted that another threat was coming. And soon enough, just that occurred, when the owners of the entity, the Hond, arrived. With Skaro in danger of falling to these fearsome foes, the Prime Strategist suggested the Doctor be used against the Hond. The Tenth Doctor was captured by the Daleks and brought before the Emperor. The Emperor convinced him to help them and sent him to meet the Strategist. Together they investigated the Vault of Obscenities and discovered a way to pacify the Hond, deploying it just as the Hond reached Skaro's defences. Daleks reverted to their usual plan to kill the Doctor soon after, but he escaped with the aid of the Thirteenth Doctor. After this, the strategist met with a furious emperor, defending its failure once more. The Daleks had gathered their intelligence from this battle, as the Hond were from the Dark Times. This is where time had gone wrong, but Dalek technology was unable to break through to the sealed part of time. So the strategist devised another plan, another Doctor. The Eighth Doctor and his TARDIS were pulled away from the planet Afana during a confrontation with Brian the Ood, and an alliance was made in the best interest of fixing time. The Doctor and the Daleks travelled together to the planet Rax, at first to study its alleged timeline, but also to pursue the Daleks' interest in their super weapon, the Devolver, a weapon that turns back the clock to a point where the target becomes prehistoric ooze. Whilst the strategist and the Doctor investigated the Raxian's gallery, the Dalek Time Commander, Scientist and Executioner met with the Raxian President, who agreed to demonstrate the Devolver and consider an alliance with the Daleks. However, the President betrayed them and prepared to use the Devolver against the Daleks, prompting the Commander to order the squad's drones to invade Rax. The Doctor negotiated a settlement with the President for the Devolver's dismantling in return for the Daleks' withdrawal, which the Daleks accepted at the strategist urging, but the Commander secretly sent the Executioner back to wipe out the Raxians with the Devolver. Daleks devious as ever. It was this adventure that gave the Eighth Doctor enough information to decipher they all needed to head to the Dark Times to work out what was wrong with time. The TARDIS was plugged into the Dalek Saucer and materialised in the Dark Times over the planet Mordela, where two battle fleets were waiting. One of these fleets were coffin ships of the undead, the soldiers of the great vampires, and with them was the Ninth Doctor, after his adventure with ancient Time Lords and the Vampires' War. And then we have the other fleet. The event that had changed time was revealed to the Daleks, the actions of the Tenth Doctor who had witnessed the works of the Katuru. Beings that decided the duration of life throughout the universe, they decided how long civilizations lived, how long grass would take to grow and how long it would take to die. They were the reason for all the death in the universe, 
and the tenth doctor had seen over nine hundred years worth of death. He had enough. He would be the Time Lord victorious. He would defeat death. Now the Katuru drew their deathly powers from the planet Mordila, and the tenth doctor commanded a fleet of mercenaries named the Victor's Fleet, which also included Ud Assassin Brian. Aboard the battleship Donna, the tenth doctor launched an attack, reverse engineering the Katuru's powers, destroying Mordila. The Daleks then opened fire on the Victor's fleet alongside the Coffin ships. The battle raged until only the Donna remained of the Victor's fleet. The Tenth Doctor on their ship escaped to the planet Magnox, while the Daleks came to the conclusion they failed to prevent the changes to time, so a new aim would be created. The Daleks had witnessed the greatness of the vampires, inspired by their strength, and the ancient weapons used by Brian the Ood on the Scarolings. They set a course through the Dark Times, hunting for their advantage. The Eighth Doctor found himself sidelined as he was only needed to ensure they could escape the Dark Times, but was allowed to join their explorations including an abandoned spaceship with a source of Huon energy. The Time Squad harvested the population of Velocia for their evil research under the pretense of saving their best citizens from the Katuru. The Commander also dispatched scout ships to wipe out the last of the Katuru, fearing their judgement on the Daleks. These Daleks would become the greatest threat to the universe at every point in time. They would invade the coffin ships and hunt for a great vampire, a huge beast of phenomenal strength and power, and they captured one. The Dalek scientist extracted the DNA of the great vampire and placed it into a Dalek mutant. The Ape Doctor, Tenth Doctor, and Brian the Ood watched as the ultimate evil was born, the Dalek symbiont. This was a Dalek that can't die, because it is undead and this DNA was then spliced into a new batch of Dalek drones. The Daleks had found their advantage, and a pre-recorded message activated from the Emperor, decreeing if the timeline could not be fixed, then the Daleks needed to utilise their time in the Dark Times wisely. They could destroy Gallifrey, before the Time Lords had even developed. The Daleks could reign supreme. The creation of these Daleks caused a significant power drain, leading to conflict between the Dalek Commander and Strategist, which enabled the Doctors to escape, and Brian to hide. Brian saved himself from the Daleks by wiring himself to an explosive in the engine room, and informed the Doctors of the Daleks' destination. The three Doctors, the Knight, the Fool, and the Dead, launched their defence of Gallifrey, firstly saving Brian the Ood, and then preparing to fight the Daleks for the sake of their people and the universe. The original symbiont was sent to the planet Beringi to kill Inyit, the last of the Katuru, but she defeated it by judging it, this judgement also wiped out the enhanced drones, turning them to dust, and throwing the Daleks into a panic. As they feared the judgement could spread to pure Dalek DNA, this judgement could have been the end of the Daleks everywhere. The Daleks ended their assault, retreating despite the strategist's demands to press the attack. The Eighth Doctor then boarded the saucer and detonated Brian's explosive, forcing the ship into the Time Vortex. The Daleks had been evicted from the Dark Times. Gallifrey was safe. The Doctors had survived, their advantage had been lost, the Daleks failed. Hurtling through the Vortex, the Eighth Doctor tore their ship apart piece by piece, meddling with gravity controls, defeating Dalek drones, incapacitating the Dalek scientist by infiltrating its laboratory, then saving the inhabitants of the lab who had been trapped by the Daleks to aid their genetic research. The Doctor made his way through the ship, dodging the Daleks' evil executioner, and making his way to the bridge, the location of his TARDIS and the Dalek Time Controller, and also the Prime Strategist. The Strategist attempted to bargain with him to escape in his TARDIS, but the Doctor exposed the deal to the Commander, leading to a firefight between the two. The Strategist exterminated the Commander, prompting the drones to turn on him, and as a traitor which allowed the Doctor to escape. And as the Dalek ship collapsed, the Daleks were torn apart by the time winds, an executioner's casing collapsed, the mutant screaming while it perished, the prime strategist watching. The Daleks really had failed. One Dalek drone would survive, recording a message for the Restoration Empire, the message that led the Daleks to the Doctor, to the Dark Times, to their Time Squad's destruction. This drone would end up on planetoid TG88.3 Omega, otherwise known as the Hollow Planet. The rogue Dalek would knock out the local android population, and take over the mining facility built long ago on the planet's surface. However, the 13th Doctor would assist the group luring the Dalek into a rubbish chute, 
that would jettison it into space. It was eventually brought on board the Starship Future, where it rebuilt its casing and sought to create a new army from the 10,000 dormant passengers. It encountered the fourth Doctor, who believed it defeated, but this Dalek had managed to survive yet again. Still aboard the Starship Future, this Dalek had become trapped within the power systems of the ship. The Dalek's weapons were disabled, but it's connected to the life support of the passengers. The crew worked to untangle the Dalek from the power core, and ultimately defeat it, once and for all. The last drone of the Time Squad was lost, but the Restoration Dalek Empire would continue. Still in the vortex, battered by the time winds, the Dalek Prime Strategist activated some Katuru crystals hidden within its casing. It uttered the words Emergency Temporal Shift, and teleported out of the vortex, filled with the remains of the Time Squad. Now we don't know where the Prime Strategist ended up immediately after, but we know that eventually it found the Emperor of the Restoration Empire, and from there his sly comments and manipulations led to the last Great Time War. And if the Emperor didn't agree with the Strategist due to his failures, then perhaps the Strategist even became the Emperor. The Time Squad was definitely finished, but the Time War had just begun. So that is the history of the Dalek Time Squad and the Restoration Empire, full of some truly brilliant Daleks. If you want to know the entire history of the Daleks, including their origins and all their invasions, be sure to check out the History of the Daleks video I made a few years back. It covers as much as I could cram into a video from comics, audios, books, games, and of course, the TV shows. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Comment below your thoughts on the Dalek Time Squad and subscribe to see more, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.